Welcome to Cat and Jess Talk the Best, where we're going to be talking about IMDb's top 250 movies from April 12th, 2018. My name is Kat. And I'm Jess. And today we are talking about number 168, Sunrise, A Song of Two Humans, which is a drama romance film from 1927. This has an 8.1 on 45,073 votes. The mystery line that we are revealing today is our mystery line from from Kill Bill, Volume 1. And it was, what he did to Shakespeare, we are now doing to Poland. So, I did not see anybody that cor- correctly guessed this one. Did you see on Facebook? No, okay. there wasn't anybody. So, it that line is from to be or not to be. Which is a quote from Shakespeare. Yeah. <laughs> that was, like, from Hamlet, technically. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so, that is that one. So, we have, we have red, light blue, and orange left. Uh, just go with orange. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. I love that line. It's coming up in a while, too. Yep few months yeah currently working on the book for that too i am not yet i am working on reading the book for come and see all right so make sure you take your guess on that one and we will reveal it in the big lebowski and so our spoiler free synopsis for this movie bored with his wife their baby, and the dull routine of farm life, a farmer falls under the spell of a flirtatious city girl who convinces him to drown his wife so they can escape together. When his wife becomes suspicious of his plan and runs away to the city, the farmer pursues her, slowly regaining her trust as to as the two as- rediscover their love for each other in this award-winning silent classic. So when I first was, like, doing my notes for this, I really thought that that was a spoiler. But I was like, it happens in literally, like, the first five minutes of the movie. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean. This is like, oh, I might have to take that out. But it's, like, the first five minutes, that woman is like, well, why don't you kill her? And I'm like, what? I was like, this bitch is crazy. <laughs> I was not expecting that. So. so I said from a 1920s movie. Yeah. I was like, nice. <laughs> Plotting yeah. murder. All right. But yeah, so that is not a spoiler because it's like the first five minutes of the movie. <laughs> um, it's true. So yeah, that's that's that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is directed by F. W. Murnau. Uh, I was I actually know who this director is. As um, do he's I. directed movies like The Last Laugh. Faust, and, of course, the classic Nosferatu. That's why I know him. Of course. <laughs> Me too. Um, and this stars George O'Brien, Janet Gnor, and Margaret Livingston. Yep. So, the ratings for this. On IMDb, 25.5% of users that rated this rated it at an 8. 25% of them rated Uh, of other users rated it at a 10 so half of the users either rated it at an 8 or a 10 i don't remember what the 9 was 17 percent almost 18 percent rated it at a 9 so 70 percent of people that watched this movie rated (laughs) it rated it at an 8 9 or 10 that's pretty high that's like when we were talking about our superhero event with um, Spider-Man and Endgame. Yeah. Like, 70-80%, like, really high numbers rated it super high. Alright, so, there was no Metacritic rating, because there wasn't really enough critic reviews on Metacritic for this movie. But on Rotten Tomatoes, this does have a 98% on 57 critical reviews. Two of the fresh SMH staff from two points of view, Sunrise is among the most remarkable films that have ever been flashed on the screen. One is the rich, sensitive beauty of the photography, the other the tragic 
tenseness of the story. Um, okay. <laughs> I was trying to wrap my head around that, but okay. I can agree with the photography, a part yeah. of it. I was going to say, the, the story is kind of, like, all over the place, but it's fun. Yeah. So. And then Antonia Quirk. The film is electric, overwhelmingly passionate, and sexual. <laughs> okay. I don't get the sexual part. Yeah. But okay. Maybe it's sure. just because he's chasing two women. I guess. And, like, always that's... kissing them. <laughs> I, don't know. I guess that's about it. That's, all, that's the only thing I can think of. I guess. I didn't know. So, the only rotten was from Time Magazine. And they said, picturesquely horrific. So horrific. Picturesquely so horrific. Now I gotta Google that word. It means I looked it up for you. Okay. Because you knew I was gonna ask what it meant. <laughs> well, I didn't know what it was either. So I wanted to know also. <laughs> um, it means tending to induce drowsiness or sleep. That's not true because I, you know that I fall asleep so much and I did not try to fall asleep during this movie. That's true. Like, I was interested in this movie, and I fall asleep for anything and everything. I can fall asleep anywhere. So that is a lie, Time Magazine. You're a liar. Lies. I do not believe that one. I do not agree at all. Uh, Okay. (laughs) So the consensus. Boasting masterful cinematography to match its well-acted, wonderfully romantic storyline, Sunrise is perhaps the final and arguably definitive statement of the silent era. I can agree with that. Yeah, I can. You say, like, all of that. I agree with it. So, the money for this one. The budget was $200,000, which is a ton of money in 1927. That is. And the only opening weekend that I could find for it was in Italy. It made $10,683. And then... The total that I could find money wise internationally, it made one hundred twenty one thousand one hundred and seven dollars. I couldn't find a total at all for the U.S. So that's weird. Yeah. So the awards. This did win three Oscars. It had three other wins and two other nominations. So the three Oscars that it won. Um, this was before. Like, this was the first Academy Awards, like, the very first one. So, Best Picture didn't have, like, its own category. There was two Best Picture categories. There was Unique and Artistic, and then Production. So, there was actually two Best Picture winners. And one was from 1927, and one was from 1928. Um, And this one won the Best Picture, Unique, and Artistic Production. And then that one that won just regular production... I wrote it down. It's Wings. Yeah. For just regular production. As like, I know my, I know some of my Oscar winners. I was trying (laughs) to remember what it was called. As like, I was just looking at my list yesterday. Yeah, I was going to say, because it was, I knew it was a short name. I just couldn't remember what the name of it was. But yeah. Wings. (laughs) Um, And then Best Actress in a Leading Role, Janet Gaynor. She won for this one, Seventh Heaven and Street Angel. She won for all three of them because their guidelines for their awards were pretty different at that point in time than they are now. So she won for all three of them, not just this one. And then Best Cinematography is the other one that this one won. So it was our very first Best Picture winner. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, that's all the awards. So initial thoughts? So, um, you told me that, because you watched it before I did, um. Yeah, but I, like, I literally got done watching it after you started, like, ten minutes after you started watching it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you kind of gave me a little heads up. You're like, music's really good. I'm like, oh, that's good, because silent films like this really depend on music. Yeah. To help it, or it can kill it. Yeah. As we know with some films. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm hoping for good music, because Kat says it. And so I started watching it. And I'm like, all right, this is really good music. But I will admit, like, the first, like, part of it, 
I was like, okay, one, this bitch is crazy. Two, this man's a fool. And three, is this really this long of a movie? Because the beginning was slow. I will say that. Yeah, the, it picks be- up. the beginning was slow, for sure. It was. It picks up, and I was just, I'm not going to lie, this should be categorized also as a comedy. Because it just, there's some very funny stuff in here. Especially if you like the old vaudeville stuff, which I do. So I was happy about that. Um, overall, I really did like this movie. I did. Uh, again, like with silent films, it's all because there's no word to it. Um, and there's just sometimes there's some cards on the screen. That's it. That's all you get. And a lot of it has to come to the actors. And they yeah. were amazing. I will say that. I give props to silent film actors because you it literally. Was all- it was all face yeah, and all, all face. body and everything. So that'd be very expressive that way. They yeah. could use their words. So, which I thought was really good. Yeah. And I could definitely see why this won Best Picture. I can't. Best Picture, unique and artistic production. <laughs> but still, I can definitely see why it's on there. And I can really see why it's on the list. Yeah. I can. Yeah. So that's fine. I enjoyed it. I did think the beginning was a little bit slow up until she's like, because it says, you know, in the synopsis about the murder up until she's like, oh, yeah, why don't you just kill her or something like she says something like that. And I'm just like, what? (laughs) That's when I was like really super drawn in. And I was like, what in the world? And I really did like the music a lot in this. Um, We'll talk about that a little bit more later. And like you said, the acting is really good. It's really well done. The main actress, she did an amazing job. I can see why she won Best Actress for this for this role specifically, because I haven't seen Seventh Heaven or Street Angel, so I don't know about those two. But I can really see why she won it. And I mean, yeah, it was funny. There was some things that I was just like, I can't believe... That this is happening right now. Like, I've never seen something <laughs> like this before. Because I don't... I've never really... I've watched, like, three vaudeville things. So I don't really... I've never really watched any. But I really did enjoy it. Because, you know, I see drama romance. I'm like, oh, great. This is going to suck. <laughs> but I feel like it should add that third category in there. I really think so. Yeah. It was it was really good. I really enjoyed this one. <laughs> All right, that was your warning. If you haven't watched the film yet, then stop listening and come back after you've watched it. So we start off and it's talking about like summertime and vacation and everything. And we see the trains and we got like some, uh... I like the transitions that they were able to do on the screen. Yeah. Uh, like, kind of, it's like the early fading kind of thing. I really liked a lot of what they did with the camera work in this one. Um, but there's a woman, and she's all dressed up and everything, and asking the wife of her <laughs> landlord, to, like, I guess, they, you know, it doesn't, there's no words, but she's trying to get him to, like, shine shoes or something yeah polish her shoes or something like that but it, it's like, you, you gotta kind of guess <laughs> there's no words that's what i guess too like so she wants her shoes kind of shined up but okay. yeah can't do that yourself yeah and she's like wandering through the town and everything and she arrives at this little farmhouse where we meet the man because they don't have names, because, you know... It's they don't. It's film. man, wife, this is woman of the city. Yeah, this uh, Margaret Livingston, that's who this one is. And then the man is George O'Brien, and his wife is Janet Gaynor. So, she gets there, and she's kind of... She doesn't go in, obviously, because she She kind of whistles for him to come out. Yeah. <laughs> but he's, like, sitting down. He's, like, about to sit down and have dinner with his wife, but he notices that... The city woman is outside. And she's like, oh, I guess I gotta go out there. (laughs) Yeah, and he, like, does it while his wife's in the kitchen getting everything ready for, like, dinner. He changes his 
into like a coat and like leaves and she's like comes out and his wife comes out and she sees that he's not there anymore and it's just like oh great yeah we see that there's two townspeople talking about how the man and his wife used to be like super happy and happy with their kids and happy together and all that and we see that the farmer and his wife have a little kid that she's like I don't know if it's a little boy or a little girl because you only really see the baby a couple of times yeah but the baby is like at the beginning of the movie I, he, it seems like really young but I think it's a flashback right here yeah because it's like really 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 young baby and then later on in the movie the baby is like a toddler older yeah like walking I noticed that and too. stuff i was like wait what <laughs> so the flashbacks in in movies like this are a little bit hard to do just because i'm <laughs> it was a little bit confusing but i mean it's okay because they talk about they're like oh now this woman's in around here and everything oh, yeah, that's right. they talk and about the they all know about her it's like they know about the other woman <clears throat> Yeah. And how the family's just been struggling because, you know, they're poor. Yeah. But, yeah, so then we see that the man is, like, heading, he's walking out to find the woman from the city. And he's traveling through the brush and over fences and all this kind of stuff to meet the woman. And she's waiting for him and, like, fixing her makeup and everything. And then they finally meet and start kissing and all that and then we jump back to the wife and see she is crying and the little baby's just like there like comforting her and i'm like that was thought it was really cute and everything um but so then it jumps back to the man and the woman from the city and she's like trying to get him to say that she is all his and he is all hers and she wants him to sell the farm and come to the city and he's like well what about my wife (laughs) and she's like well couldn't she just like die like couldn't you just kill her it's like drown her yeah it's like make it look like an accident i'm like holy shit this bitch has thought this out hasn't she yeah and she's like (laughs) gives him this whole plan like oh yeah just get these little bushels here and tie him up and then you can use these just capsize the boat and drown her and this that and the other and i'm like what yeah that's someone who has thought about killing somebody yeah and then of course the man he like is shocked about it so he chokes her because he's so mad i'm like he's gonna kill this person (laughs) there's gonna be a murder somewhere (laughs) yeah i was like somebody's gonna die in this movie (laughs) And now I'm, like, really understanding where the drama comes in. I'm like, okay, I get it now. There's but, the drama. <laughs> but so she's, like, trying to kiss him to calm him down and everything. And, uh, he finally, she finally does calm down and he kisses her and he's like, okay, yeah, sure, I'll do it. He's, like, imagining the city and sky cra- skyscrapers, the big buildings, the cars, like, all that. And the woman... It's just like dancing and stuff while she's like dancing while she's explaining her plan. And then so the man is like, okay, yeah. And then he heads on home. With his bundle. Yep. He takes his little bundle of weeds home with him. <laughs> and he goes back and he like hides the um, little bundle of weeds. Because he thinks that his wife is asleep. And I think at this point, she is asleep. Um, And then, so he falls asleep after that. And then the wife wakes up and, like, watches him sleep. And then she covers him up and, like, being all lovey-dovey and just, like, staring at him and stuff. And then sometime during the night, we don't see it. But she found the, like, bundle of weeds because in the morning he finds that it's been uncovered and stuff. Yeah. 
Okay, I was the only one who was, like, trying to figure out how that worked out. Okay, yeah. good. They just didn't show it, but she found it. Yeah. That's what I wrote down. I just wasn't sure. Yeah. Okay, good. So, in the morning, he's, like, trying to think of how he's going to do this and everything. And he's, like, looking at his wife and thinking about it and kind of sad. But then you get the, like, you get another, like, overlay on the um, on the screen. Which yes. I, I really liked how they did that. Um, but they... He, like, sees the woman from the city, and she's, like, caressing him and kissing him and, like, urging him to commit the murder. (laughs) It's like, come on, do it. (laughs) Yeah. And so he goes to his wife and asks her, hey, do you want to come with me? I'm going to go. I guess they're, he did we don't really see it, but you, like, see it on her face that she's kind of ecstatic because he's asking her something. And you can only guess that, you know, he's asking her to go out on the boat because that's the plan. (laughs) So go on a boat ride. Yeah. So she leaves her kid with, I don't know, like an aunt or grandma or somebody. I don't really know because it didn't say. (laughs) Nobody has names. I just put like maid or something. Yeah, I didn't know. I thought maybe it was grandma or an aunt or something. I don't know. (laughs) It's somebody. But they're not rich enough to have a maid. So I don't think it's a maid. (laughs) Um, So... They head out on the boat trip, and the dog is like, so she says goodbye to the kid, and she says goodbye to the dog, and the dog's, like, barking and, like, wants to go away. Like, he knows something's up. So he, like, he books it and breaks his chain, the dog does, as they're getting on the boat. And he, like, runs and runs and runs, and they've, like, taken off in the boat, and he jumps in the water and, like, is swimming out to the boat, and at first the man's, like, not gonna stop. He's just gonna keep going. But the, the wife, she's like, tells him to stop and they get the dog gets on and everything and so the man's like upset she's like i gotta go back and put the dog away but i was like that dog knows something but then i'm just like why didn't the dog bite him like i just i didn't or maybe the puppy just wanted to go for a ride in the boat maybe i don't know (laughs) but the way that they were like making the dog act made made it seem like he knew something was up so i thought that's what it was maybe i don't know Um, just going with either side here yeah but so then he the man gets back on the boat and he's like doesn't want to look at her he just keeps rowing yeah and then we start getting this like horror music love it Yeah, I thought it was really well done. And he, like, starts looking real angry and, like, kind of early slasher movie villain type. Like, he's got that look on his face that you see when you finally realize who the slasher is in the slasher movie. (laughs) It's like, I wrote down sinister look. Yeah. I felt like I had to include that. (laughs) (laughs) The sinister look. Yeah, yeah. And so he's, like, looking at her, and she's getting all worried and everything, like, he's about to do something. Like, I don't know what's about to happen, but he's about to do something. And so he stops rowing, and he's, like, looking at her, and the music is all dark and scary. And he, like, starts coming towards her, and she's, like, leaning halfway off the boat. Like, I'm like, where are you gonna go? (laughs) (laughs) There's only the water. Yeah, I'm like, what? And my whole time during this whole, like, murder plot, I'm like, okay, I don't understand. Like, does she not know how to swim? Is that what this is? That's what I thought, too. I was like, does she not know how to swim? Because I'm like, that's that's really the only thing I can think of that would make this work, is that she doesn't know how to swim, and that's why she hasn't jumped in the water yet. (laughs) It's like, that, uh, I was like, if they really wanted to do it right, I mean, you know, you just gotta hit her, then throw her in. Yeah. Just, like, knock her out, and then she'll drown herself, because... There's that way, but I don't think they thought that all the way through. No. But so, he's, like, coming towards her, and she's, like, leaning halfway out the boat, and then the bells start ringing. Yeah. Across the way. And I don't know what happens with some kind of sort of magical bell or something, but he just doesn't want to kill her anymore. He's like, oh, (laughs) never mind, we're just gonna, just gonna stop there. And so he starts rowing to the side of the lake. Not even back to the house. Just the side of the lake or the whatever they're in. I'm guessing it's a lake. Yeah, and as soon as they hit shore, she gets the hell out of there. (laughs) Books it. (laughs) And he runs after her, of course. She's pretty quick. I know. I was like, damn. She's pretty quick. (laughs) 
<laughs> so she jumps on this little trolley and everything because she was pretty far ahead of him. Because she stops the trolley and the trolley starts going again. And just at the last moment, the man gets on the trolley and everything. And then he's like trying to talk to her. But of course, we can't see the conversation. We just see her kind of cowering in the corner and him standing over her. And it looks like his lips are moving. looks like he's like saying something. But we don't get the information. We don't see what he's saying. No. So... He's traveling through the woods and traveling, gets to the city and everything. And once he gets to the city, of course, she bolts again. She, like, <laughs> takes off through cars and everything. So she doesn't even care. Yeah, and, and like, he catches up with her, too. And I'm like, and what I was thinking right there is, just let her get hit by a car if you want her dead. Like, she's doing it her being <laughs> self anyways. She's gonna get run over. <laughs> it was an accident. She got hit by a car. <laughs> After running from him, but still. But so he's, like, yelling at her, don't be afraid of me, don't be afraid of me. And he catches her, and they head to a little restaurant and everything. And they sit down, and she, like, won't look at him. And so he goes and gets some cake. And right there, I'm like, okay, run away. Like, he's gone. Run away. But Yeah, she's just paralyzed. Yeah. But I have that horror movie mentality, like... <laughs> yes, you do. Any opening book it <laughs> so long as it's there's specific places that you like specific movies you can't book it but this one if this was a horror movie you could book it <laughs> i think so because she's faster than him <laughs> she is pretty fast um she doesn't want any of that she grabs a piece but she doesn't want any of it and she just starts crying yeah know? and she just like gets up and they leave and yeah. everything. He's trying to calm her down, you know. And he, like, buys her flowers and everything. And uh-huh. you hear bells ringing again. And you see that there's a wedding taking place. Yeah. And so they go into the church. And they're watching the wedding and everything. And they sit kind of in the back. But I'm just like, who let them in here? Like. Don't they close <laughs> churches when there's weddings going on? Like, are you allowed in there when there's a wedding going on? I mean, if the doors are unlocked. But I figured they would lock them, you know? I mean, I didn't have my wedding in a church, so I don't know. But I figured they would lock the door and not let anybody into that specific area if they're having a wedding. But he's just sitting there bawling on her lap during the middle of this wedding. Because he's hearing these vows and he's realizing, oh, I made, like, huge mistake. Yeah. And so he, like, he begs her forgiveness and everything. And um, they don't really say it specifically, but I think he, like, promises her that he's never going to do that again. He's going to love her and blah, 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 blah. Like, all that romantic stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, so then they leave the church. And then there's, like, all these people that are standing outside the church waiting for the married couple to come out. And they're, like, looking at each other like, what in the world is going on? <laughs> <laughs> and so they're, um... They're walking and stuff. They just walk through the street. Don't even care about the cars. And I really liked how they did this, too. This is another one of those, like... Uh, well, no. This is kind of like the interlaying thing. Like, early CGI, kind of. Before CGI was a thing. Yeah. Uh, but I really liked how they did this. And they went, like, the traffic faded to, like, the woods. And they're just, like, oblivious and think they're, like, in the woods or whatever. But then... The yelling stuff starts, and it's really cool, because that was actually, like, part of the movie. Like, these people are actually yelling. It wasn't, like, the band or anything, because normally when something like that happens in a silent film, the people doing the music are doing the yelling. (laughs) But this one is, like, when we get to that, I'll talk more about it, because I do have that trivia for this one. But so, the people are, like, in the middle of the traffic, and all the people are, like, stopped, and they're yelling at them. And <laughs> yeah, that was really funny. There's even a horse. <laughs> um, it's like, so they, what are you doing? Yeah, I move over to the, uh, what's it called? The sidewalk before. I, I don't even really even sidewalks. Just like drive wherever you want. And over here is like designated for the people. Because <laughs> it just really didn't seem like there was any sidewalks anyways. But they move over to the side and are kind of like in a post-wedding bliss, I suppose. I guess. That's what I was like. Alright. Um, so then they go, they see like this wedding photo shop place, and they see that, but the man's like, 
oh, I gotta get shaved up first. Gotta clean. Gotta get cleaned up. So they go to a barber shop, and he sits down to have a shave and get his hair all nice up and everything. And so he's sitting down having a shave, and she's watching, and um, a woman walks up. And at first, I thought it was the city woman, but I was like, I don't, I don't think so. I think it was just some other woman. Because she had dark hair, and her eyes were dark, like the first woman, the the woman from the city that we see. So I thought it was her at first, but it wasn't. Um, but she shows up and is like wanting to give him do something. I don't know. They didn't say. <laughs> At first, but then it's like, oh, do you want, like, a manicure? Oh, okay, yeah, they did. And, uh, he's like, oh, no, no, no. And so he, she walks away, and, um, then there is a man sitting next to the wife, and he's, like, keeps leaning closer and moving closer and, like, putting his arm on her and stuff, and she's, like, getting annoyed at him, and then the man gets up, uh, the husband gets up, and he's, like, comes at this dude <laughs> oh man this is great i was like this is some ghetto shit i like it <laughs> like, this, is, this is funny that was, i like that part but he like pulls out his pocket knife because the man had taken one of the wife's flowers and so the husband pulls out his pocket knife and you think he's gonna like slice his throat right then and there and i'm like what is this <laughs> like what is this movie <laughs> I'm like oh my god and then he, like, cuts the flower off, but he does it so fast. I'm like, what in the world? Yeah, he gets that flower back and, just, like, just puts the pocket knife away and just walks away. I'm like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so then they go back to the photographer and everything. And uh, they're getting ready to have their picture taken. And the photographer is, like, trying to um, get him to pose a certain yeah. way. Well, you know, like, photographers do, like, oh, I want you to tilt your head this way, that way, blah 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 Like, all yeah. their, all their tricks and stuff to make the picture look better, better. But so he, like, goes and, like, starts to take the picture and he's got his, uh, head under the little tarp thing or whatever, the yes. cloth for, to take the picture. And since he's under there, they start kissing and so the photographer is like, oh, I'm gonna take the picture now. So he takes You're the like, picture. And I'm like, that's a good picture. And yeah. I like how it showed... How, how what the photographer is seeing. Yeah, it's like upside down. Which I, I love. really cool. Because that's like, how they used to, that's how cameras used to work. Yes, it was upside down. Like that. Um, which I thought was, was so cool. Yeah, I really liked that. So, the photographer goes to um, develop the picture. Because, you know, it's not instantaneous like it is now. Um, they actually have to go develop it. So he's back there developing it, and they're waiting, and the wife accidentally knocks over this statue. And the, <laughs> so they're, like, looking around for the head of the statue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they find this little ball with, like, a face drawn on it, and they put that on top of the statue. Yeah, they are, like, so the wife goes and looks at the, you know, the picture and everything, and while well, got the, you know, photographer distracted, the husband puts the ball on the statue and it's like okay we're good yeah <laughs> i lost it there <laughs> and so they take the picture and they run off and the photographer sees it and he just laughs <laughs> I'm like, what? he's just like okay <laughs> yeah it was it was funny i liked it, was it. Like, it was funny they, yeah there's a little bit of vaudeville there and then we see somewhere in this i think it's right before they go to like the little fair thingy um the city woman sees an ad in the newspaper for people buying farmland so yes. she like circles it and everything and then it jumps back to the man and his wife and they're heading to this like i don't really even know what it's supposed to be it's like it looks like almost like an indoor carnival yeah it's like a carnival amusement park thingy i don't know i just put both I'm gonna, down i'm gonna call it disney world Cause Disney World. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's way before Disney World. Disneyland it didn't come around till the fifties. That's yeah, I know, but it's just <laughs> I don't know what else to compare it to. <laughs> but this part was like the most random thing. It's like a like I can think of like a fair. Yeah, maybe. I think that's it's, the closest I can yeah, think it's of. Something like a fair. But so. They're there, and they're playing some carnival games. One of them is this little ball game that you throw the ball at the target, and it lets the piggy 
out of the little cage that he's in and he gets to run and one of the pigs gets out of the little thingy that they're in and he books it like through the fair and so (laughs) husband's over there chasing him and i thought that was hilarious and like the pig pig. like goes through like the dance floors and everything and through the kitchen i'm like oh lord yeah the kitchen part's funny there's one point in time where the pig starts drinking wine, and I'm like, had fallen on the floor because the waiter in the back that had noticed there was something left and was drinking it. And yeah. the pig surprised him, so he dropped yeah. it. So the pig starts drinking the wine off the floor, and I'm just like, did they really give that pig wine? Is I was it? hoping not, but because it... afterward they had to have done something because after he's like they're licking up whatever it is, whatever they actually gave him. He doesn't walk like a normal pig. He, like, starts <laughs> no. tripping all over the face. He's, like, no. stumbling. I'm like, oh, did you get the pig drunk? <laughs> so either the pig is drunk or they put something on his feet to where he couldn't walk right. Oh. <laughs> but I thought that was hilarious, the little pig. I thought the pig was cute. Um, but so they catch the pig. Uh, the man catches the pig, and so they're like, oh, woohoo, the band is going to play the peasant dance, and you have to do the peasant dance because you caught the pig. <laughs> I'm like, What? <laughs> And at first, the husband's like, no, nah, I don't want to. And then the wife is like, oh, okay, okay. So they're they're doing the dance and everything. And there's one part in here that I thought was funny. The uh, There's one lady, her dress shoulder sleeves, like his th- thin straps keep falling. And this is the man keeps like putting them back up or like holding them and stuff. That is and classic they, vaudeville. They just keep falling, keep falling and stuff. And uh, then... Uh, at one point, he just gives up and pulls them both down. She turns around and smacks him. <laughs> Thought that was funny. That was really funny. Um, so then, after the dance is over, the couple goes to, like, this little dinner thing. Well, they don't even really have dinner. They just have drinks. So they're drinking and talking and everything. And the waiter comes with their bill. And <laughs> the man doesn't have enough money in his pocket to pay it. But the woman has her little pocket purse thing it's like she pays, pays too. the rest yeah pays the rest of it and then so they're heading out and at first they're gonna take the bottle of wine but they don't they like, put it back down the waiter is like um <laughs> she, wife is little... a little tipsy we can see that yeah <laughs> so um they're heading out and we see these i'm gonna guess that they're fireworks <laughs> that's what i guess too fireworks it really looked like the whole place was about to catch on fire <laughs> I was like, those are some dangerous fireworks. For sure. But so they're heading home. And they get on a little trolley to take them back to where the boat was left and everything. And they're on the, um, they get on the boat, heading back, and they're drifting along. And they see these people on, um. It's on another boat. Yeah, it's like, uh. It's a specific kind of boat. It's just, like, kind of flat with not really much else on it. And they've got, like, fire going. They're partying. They're singing. They're drinking. They're having fun. And I'm like, that boat is going to catch on fire and sink. Because it's already on fire. They already have a fire on the boat. So I don't know what's going to happen to that boat. But literally, like, right after they see that boat, the wife falls asleep. She was, like, so excited and everything. She falls asleep. And then... This big, huge storm starts. And I'm just like, that is a huge storm to just kind of come out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, it just all of a sudden, like, it starts winds blowing like crazy. And it's like, yeah. oh, okay. He's yeah. calm within the storm. <laughs> it's like the eye of a hurricane and then the rest of it's coming. But it's just, <laughs> you didn't get the first part of the hurricane. You just got the eye and then the rest of it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but so the man, the wife's still asleep, so the man's like trying to steady the boat and like control it and make sure it doesn't tip over, but. And I was wondering, I'm like, how is she still asleep if this boat is rocking like crazy and the wind is really loud and all of that? I was just very puzzled by that. Yeah, I don't think if I was out, like on a boat in that, that I would still be able to sleep, but like if. There's a storm and I'm asleep inside and it's like really loud. I can sleep through it. That's inside though. Yeah. That is. If I'm outside, then no, I would not be able to sleep through that. (laughs) So 
I was confused at the, at the same thing. She's just sleeping through it. She does wake up. Yeah. And he, like, he tried to study the boat and everything, but it doesn't work. So he gets the weeds that he had stashed on the boat from when he was going to kill her. And he, like, ties them to her. And I'm just, I really don't understand how that's supposed to help her float. I really don't get it. But I guess it, it works. Because he ties them to her and everything. And then the boat flips over and the storm is passed. And yeah, it calms see... down. I'm like, so was it just for that? Yeah, this is that's literally all it was. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. It was a knock him out of the boat. That's it. Yep. It's like, well, yep. what about the other boat now? Yeah. Now it get caught on fire. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't get tipped over for it. It just caught on fire. <laughs> it caught on fire. It's gone. <laughs> so the man is uh, in like a little rocky areas where he washes up and I'm like so he can swim <laughs> he can swim she I can't guess she swim. can't okay um and he starts like calling out for her and everything yeah it's like wondering where she is I'm like well you better go look for her then yep he's like so searching for her and everything he gets a bunch of people to come out and search and they're like out on the water and their boats and they're searching. The storm is completely gone. I don't know where it went, but it's gone. No signs of the storm. It was just like a snap, snap. That's how quick it was. <laughs> yeah. So then we see the, like, weeds floating in the water. And that convinces the huntsman that she's drowned. Like, she's gone. I'm like, isn't that what you wanted in the first place? <laughs> It's like, but then he had the, you know, the whole fun day with her. So, no, he doesn't want that anymore. Yeah. It's just the other woman is a little bit too persuasive, I guess. People's hearts don't change that fast. So, I was just like, um. But I guess it's it's a movie, so whatever. But. (laughs) So, he's pretty torn up about it. He goes home and he's like super sad and crying and all that. And the woman from the city goes to his house and is, like, calling out to him and stuff. And he, like, starts chasing her and he catches her and he chokes her. He likes to choke people when he's angry. I noticed that. He's got some problems there. He's really gonna kill somebody one day. Probably. But, yeah. (laughs) Um, these people start calling. Because, um, they found the wife. And so... These people start yelling for the husband, and the person that was staying with the baby goes and runs and finds him, and is, like, yelling at him, and tells him, come back, hey, found her. It's like, I found her, and he's like, yay, and he goes, like, over there, and she's back. And the guy that had found her was saying, he's like, I know this water's pretty well, so I went to go look, you know, a different part, and I found her. Yeah. And... Then she's like, wife's laying in the bed, and husband's sitting with her and everything. We see the woman from the city leaving. This is she sunrise. Yeah, she ain't ever gonna come back. And so they're sitting there after, like you said, after the sunrise, and they're smiling at each other, they're hugging, and that's that's it. That is pretty much the movie. Yeah. I mean, it's only an hour and a half, so. Yeah, it was super short. So it was really weird because, like, when I was looking, you know, the version I sent you. Yes. It was the shortest of the three videos that I found on YouTube. And I was like, well, this one is the closest to the timestamp of the one that we're actually supposed to be watching. So I think this is the one we should watch because one of them was almost two hours. What? Yeah, it was an hour and 51 minutes. I'm like, how is it this long? I didn't click on it to see, but there's some reason as to why it was that long. So, yeah, that's the end of the movie. Huh. Yeah. So the music for this, I'm not entirely sure which version we watched, but there are a couple of different ones. And one thing that I will say, kind of, it's kind of trivia as well as kind of part of the music. So this is one of the first films to have the music, like, embedded in the movie. Yes. It actually came with it instead of having a live band at the movies. Yes. 
So, I don't know, because there still are multiple versions of the music for this. Like, there is five different versions of the music. One of them is by R.H. Bassett. That was for a Los Angeles premiere. Carly Eleanor for another Los Angeles premiere. Erno Rapi, New York premiere. Hugo Reisenfeld. Yeah. 1928. Didn't, um, no premiere, just like the 1928 release, I guess. And then another release, Willie Smith Gentner. Gentner. So, there are multiple versions of music for this. But it's also one that has the music embedded into the movie. So, I'm guessing they had five different versions of the movie. Like, all the same, but five different music, to, like, music embedded into it. But I thought it was really cool that this was the first one that the music was embedded into it. And I really did like the music for this one. I felt like it really went well with it. Oh, I yeah. I loved all the genre changes throughout it. I did, too. I thought it was really well done, and I wish that I knew which version we watched. Oh, I, I know. Wish- That'd be nice, because I-, I like it a lot. I did, too. I really liked the music for this one. But when I was looking in the notes on the YouTube video, I was like, I don't, it doesn't say anything about which version it is or which music is with this one. So I really don't know which one it is. But I felt like the music was really well done. It fit really well. And I mean, we can't really complain about it being too loud because there's no, there's nothing else to listen to. It's just the music. So. Exactly. And I feel like that's what silent movies really need is the music so that it was really well done i know because i've seen a movie where it's a silent (laughs) film and there's no damn music and that was the longest freaking movie ever (laughs) yeah your version the version of joan of arc that you watched did not have music i was so pissed i was so pissed you're like oh i like this movie i'm like what are you talking about (laughs) i'm like this is so i liked the music for that movie The movie overall was okay. (laughs) You liked it better than I did. Well, you didn't have any music. I know. See, music makes such a big part of a movie. It really is. (sighs) Um, So comparison, I mean, like you were saying, you kind of were comparing it to, like, vaudeville stuff. Yes. But, I mean, movie-wise and book-wise, there's not another version of this this is on its own type thing so i was like i just like a lot of the comedy was very vaudeville like yeah that's what you were saying i like especially like with the man and like the woman's sleeves doing that classic vaudeville classic (laughs) that was really funny you know it's something very simple but if it's timed correctly it's very funny yeah and the facial expressions do a lot with it too yeah. So, trivia. I did say the one about the music, how it was, like, embedded in with the film. Like, yes. how it is now. It's all together. Whereas, at that point in time, it used to have be, like, live music during the movie. Yes. Um, and then the other one that I wanted, that I had found that I wanted to talk about was the, like, pre-CGI that we had talked about. When they were, like, overlaying different things. On. Yeah, that's a cool technique. Yeah. So what they did is, like, for some of it, like, with the scene where they're walking through the cars and stuff, they just, like, put tape or something over where they were going to put the people, and they taped the cars and stuff, and then they did it vice versa. They taped the rest of it while they were, wa- like, while they were um doing... The people walking. And then they just put them together. So that way they like cut it together. Which I'm like, that's got to take a lot of time. Because yeah. there's like so many frames in that little amount of time. I'm just like, that's got to take a lot of time. But I really like how they were like overlaying different frames into another one. Like with the woman. When she's like kind of a ghost type figure. I really liked. I really liked that technique. I thought it was... Really well done. And kind of like in early stages of CGI. Yeah. And there's also um, some back projection also. Really? 
So, you know, there's like how you're just talking about with the um, covering up one part yeah. of the screen, part of the camera with that. Like there's a back projection. So like how they're imagining something. That was a projection. Okay. Yeah, I really yeah. liked all the techniques, and I feel like this movie led to a lot of, like, people pulling techniques from this movie to get into their, like, to go on into the next few sets of movies and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so, keeping going with the trivia. Um, so, this was all built on a big set. Huge set. Not on location <laughs> at all. Huge set. I'm like, well, that explains the budget. Yeah. It does. It's a huge set. Yeah. Built just for the movie. I was like, oh, okay, that explains a lot. This didn't do very well at the box office. Part of the reason why is because it was released a month after The Jazz Singer. Yeah. And The Jazz Singer is known for being the first talkie, yeah. as they called it back then. The first movie with dialogue. That you can actually hear. Yeah. And so people did not want to hear silent films after that. They're like, no, we want people, they want to hear what the actors are actually saying. Yeah. So that kind of, that's the reason why I bombed a little bit. Except for now, I think that this one is more appropriate than the jazz singer. I've heard some <laughs> not very good things about the end of the jazz singer. <laughs> no, no. That's that's true. I was like, Jazz Singer just really known for being like the first talkie. Yeah. I was like, oh, that explains why I didn't do so well. You're competing with a movie that has actors actually you can hear them talking. Yeah. I'm like, oh, got it. So you got the first movie with talking and then the first movie with embedded music a month apart. A month apart from each other, yes. I was like, wow. That is crazy. I mean, and we talked about this earlier with the awards, how this was the first, like, best picture and the one with the unique art direction yeah. and production. That's the only one that's ever won that. This is that's the only time only, that award was available. <laughs> that is the only one. Because after that, they cut that out and just did production. Yeah, so just best picture. And then they cut it, you know, just best picture. Yep. I'm like, so this one stands out just for that, yeah. especially. Which I think is really cool. Um, what else? There's a couple more I want to say. Um, so, this, I will say, is our director's first American film. Okay. Because he's from Germany, yeah. actually. Which I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So it's kind of like when we had Rebecca earlier. That was Alfred Hitchcock's first American film movie also. Yeah. Because, you know, he's from England and over there. Mm-hmm. Which I think is cool, you know. You got two movies, like, both directors' first American films, like, really close to each other. Yeah. I think that's a cool comparison. <sighs> what was the last one I wanted to say? Ha. There it is. So... The original negatives of the film were destroyed. Yeah, I heard that fire. this guy, he has, what, like 21-something films, but eight of them, there's either eight of them destroyed or eight of them left of his 21, something like that. Yeah, and I'm really glad this one is okay, but, I mean, the original negative's gone, but we still can see it. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's one of the... First movies, Silent Films, to be on Blu-ray, which I think is really cool. Yeah. It's on Blu-ray. I think that's all I have. Okay. So, where it has been on the list before, and where is it? where it's at right now. The 2010 list, it was number 153. The 2012 list, it was not on. The 2014 list, it was number 215. The 2016 list, it was number 155. The 2018 list, it was number 180. And as of today, when we were recording, I was scrolling through the list and I couldn't find it anywhere. So, as of right now, it's not on the list, which is kind of weird because it has an 8.1. But the list is kind of finicky, so. That's true. I really don't know. 
Yeah, I'm on their page and it's not on there. Yeah. And usually you go to a page and it tells you if it's in the top 250. Yeah, it'll say what number it is, but it's not on there right now. So I don't know, maybe at the end of the year it'll be back on there. We'll find out. But I do think that this one does deserve to be on there because it's so influential, I'll say. I would agree with that. I wouldn't say iconic because I had never heard of this movie. But it is so influential. I knew about it because it was a Best Picture winner. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. So, previously, number 168, the 2010 list, The Terminator from 1984, the 2012 list, The Big Sleep from 1946, the 2014 list, No Country for Old Men from 2007, the 2016 list, Muna by MBBS from 2003. The 2018 list, Come and See from 1985. And as of today when we are recording, Blade Runner from 1982. Hmm. So quite a few movies that are on our list. I don't remember if Muna by MBBS is on our list. I think I've that's... I've looked. I don't think so. Because it's one that keeps like popping on and popping back off. And I don't know about the big sleep either, because I was just looking, and I don't think it is. I don't think the big sleep's on our list. No. I was looking. The rest of them are on our list, and the the Moonabai and the big sleep keep popping on and off the list, so. Yeah, it's not on there. So, our podcast trivia. This is the first time that we've had this director. Um, I don't know if we'll have him again. I think this will be the only one, which kind of sucks because I really like Nosferatu and I wish that that one was on the list. <laughs> I love Nosferatu. It's a great movie. That would be a good Halloween movie. It would be. I've got my two picks for this year. We already got ours year. for this year. So but next yeah. year, maybe. Next year. It's adoption. It's um, like, I'm already doing a movie that's older anyways for our Halloween event. So. Yeah. This is the first time our three main actors, first time we've had any of them. I didn't put any of the composers down for this one, just because I didn't know which one to put down. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, this is officially, at the moment, the oldest movie that we've had, because The Passion of, of Joan of Arc it came out in 1928, whereas this one came out in 1927, so this is officially our oldest movie at the moment. I was like, at the moment, give yes. us a few months. <laughs> yeah. This is our second silent film. But not our last. We will have quite a few more. Yes, we will, which I'm happy about. And then for the votes, this did have just over 45,000 votes, uh, which is right along with The Wages of Fear and Tokyo Story. And then Rotten Tomatoes is the only other one that this, or was the only one of the two that this had a rating on. So the other ones that were at 98% on Rotten Tomatoes were Eight and a Half, The Passion of Joan of Arc, and It Happened One Night. So for me, movies I did not quite enjoy <laughs> as much. Uh, you you didn't mind It Happened One Night. Yeah, I didn't mind It Happened One Night. It was all right. I think I put it like a five or a six or something like that. But Eight and a Half and The Passion of Joan of Arc were kind of <laughs> low for me. Especially Eight and a Half. Yeah. So... <laughs> But I mean, like we said previously, we don't always agree with critics. So We don't. So yeah, that's all the podcast trivia for this one. So favorite line. We had to pull these off the cue cards because, you know. <laughs> I have two. I, have I actually two. wrote down five. Wow, Kat. That's impressive for you, actually. Yeah. Especially a silent film. I'll do mine. Um... Will thou to love her? Yeah, my other one is We'll sell home by moonlight, another honeymoon. Okay. So I wrote down Couldn't she get drowned? Partially because that is terrible grammar. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> and then also, the other reason I wrote this one down is because I really liked what they did with the cue card. With like the effect that they did with it. Whether like, like it kind of was like melting or drowning or like you know what I mean? Like, they had an effect with this cue card, and normally they don't really do much with the cue cards. They just put them up there. <laughs> so I thought it was kind of cool that they did that. Um, 
Don't be afraid of me. I mostly wrote that one down because he said it a couple of times and I was going to count how many times he said it, but he only said it two times. So I stopped counting. <laughs> um, she is young and inexperienced. Um, she is the sweetest bride I've seen this year. That was the photographer and put a big old smile on the dude's face. So I was like, oh, that's kind of cute. <laughs> and then my favorite one, just because I thought it was hilarious Hit the hole, make the little piggy roll. <laughs> okay, that is pretty funny. I was cracking up at that. So I was like, yep, that's it. That's the one I like. So that's what I picked for that one. I like it. You want to do that one? Yeah. So what is your rating? I gave this a solid eight. Okay. Um, It just fit with my eights. So there's nothing more I can say about that. I mean, yeah. It fit right there. I was like, does it go any lower? No. Does it go any higher? No, it's at a solid eight for me. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it just fits there. Okay. I also gave this one an eight. Just like you said, it just really fit with my eights. I thought it was really done well, and I was surprised that I actually enjoyed it. Like, it, like you said, it did start out a little bit slow. Um. But once you get to that murder plot, I was just, like, intrigued the whole time. I, like, didn't want (laughs) to look away. And I was watching this on my computer, so I had plenty of things that I could have been doing besides watching this, like, to get distracted by, but I didn't. I just, I was watching it, and I was intrigued by it. So, that's pretty high praise for a romance categorized movie. (laughs) I'm like, I seriously still think that should be, they add comedy to it. That should be the third category for it. (laughs) I'm, I'm, there's so much comedy in there. There is. It's a, it's a really funny movie. I love the I love the little carnival thing. The carnival I, is like my favorite I remember part. at the statue part when they put the little ball oh, yeah. on the statue's head. I had to pause the movie because I was laughing so much. I did like that part. That part was funny. <laughs> but yeah, for me, I really liked the acting. The music was really well done. There's, I just, it really just fits with my eights, like you said, just where it's going to go. So... So, our next film is Come and See from 1985. It is, I don't know if it's, it's like Russian, Hungarian movie. It was first released released in Hungary, but I think it's a Russian movie. I know. I think it's in Russian. It's got three languages, actually. Hold on, let me pull it back up. Yeah, it's got three. It's got Russian, Belarusian, German. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the main language that they use is the Belarusian. So I think that's just like um, the countries right there next to Russia. That's their offshoot of Russian, I guess. But I think like the um, country that produced it is Russia, I think. From what I've heard... This one is going to be pretty interesting, because it is based in the time of World War II. Two and a half hours. Yeah. But it's, little thing I see here, it says it is a 1985 Belarusian anti-war film from the Soviet Union. Oh, jeez. So. But from what I've heard, it's haunting. Because of the things, like, the things that happen in it, like, they actually do. So, I'm like, um, that's kind of scary. Okay, so prepare myself for that mentally. Got it. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know if it's, like, everything that they do in it is they actually do it, but it's, I've heard it's very brutal, and it's very hard to watch, and it's very haunting. So, it'll be interesting. So, yeah. Next week, Come and See from 1985. And then coming up at the end of the month, we do have our Disney event. Which is the two movies that I picked are Lilo and Stitch from 2002 and Oliver and Company from 1988. And I picked Mulan from 1998 and The Hunchback of Notre Dame from 1996. Yep. So make sure you check those out. And they will all be out on April 30th, so the last day of the month. You'll get that one. We are offering premium and Patreon. You can find the links to those in the show notes. When you follow those links, it gives you all the perks. You can subscribe to that for just a dollar a month. And that helps us keep the website running. 
We do offer our special monthly episode for premium and patron members. Our special monthly episode this month is Star Wars Attack of the Clones, which is one of Jess's least favorite movies. I already did my two, so it's her turn to do her second one. (laughs) So make sure you check that out, premium and patron members. If you want to check it out and you're not one of those members, you can get it for just a dollar a month and it will be available on April 29th. We're not going to put it out on the 30th because you're already getting four episodes that day. Don't want to overwhelm you too much. (laughs) If you can't support us that way, you can always leave ratings and reviews. That helps us out a ton, lets us know how we're doing, and helps us get more listeners. You can talk to us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, or you can email us. All the links are in the show notes. Our music is by Audio Binger, and you can find him on Facebook, YouTube, and his website, audiobinger.net. So until next time, thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you when we watch Come and See. Bye. Bye.